Awesome. Hello, hello, everyone. It's Christical, Ugly Duckling Master Educator. I'm just getting up uh, my second device set up here so that I can see if we have any comments during today's live. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to pop on live and do a quick demo for you guys using our Ugly Duckling Tippies today on my finger. Okay, I think I'm set up on that one. Excellent. Okay, so I am going to do a demo for you guys using our tapered square tippies, which I've already picked my size out that I'm going to use. We um, have two kinds of tips. Happy Friday. I know it is Friday. It's the weekend for those who don't work over the weekend. Um, so we have two kinds of full contact tips our tapered square, which I'm going to use today, and our pointed almonds. So these tips can be used various ways. And today I'm going to show you my favorite quick, easy way of applying the tip using our Ugly Duckling Sculpting Gel. So my preference is using our clear gel for applying the tippies. But of course, you can use whatever system you prefer to use, whether it's acrylic, you can use our builder base, you can even apply it with acro gel. My go to is the sculpting gel. And I'm going to prep everything using hand file and or buffer for this quick and easy application. And then I'm going to follow it by some bling bling. So I've picked out my bling and my color today. So we're going to do a beautiful design and I'm going to walk you guys through how to use our clear as mud pointed back crystals using our stick it and blinger. So it'll be a fun, uh, fun live. When are you going to make a larger thumb size? That's a great question. So we did recently um, change the, the sizing of our tips to have better variation and the thumb size is uh, fairly large, but are you have you recently got our tippies um, within the last year, I believe it is, or previous to that? Because we did switch our sizing up to have a better variety of sizing, smaller, um, smaller size and a larger size as well. So just um, keep in mind when you possibly have purchased the other tippies um, since then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using our tapered square. I just wanted to show you our pointed almond. I haven't prepped the, the natural nail. Um, this, this nail I did previously have a little bit of product left on it, but I just thought I'd just come in and do a quick prep so you guys can see how I do my prep. I'm just going to take the natural nail down just a little bit. I find, especially when I'm doing new sets, that I like to take that natural nail right down, especially with form placement applying any tips so that we have a great bond of that full the full sculptless tip is what we call it and i'm just going to lightly etch the nail plate i do have a little bit of product residue still left on my natural nail so i'm going to very carefully remove that first i always use our medium our medium file if i'm using a hand file to prep the natural nail this is about 180 grit. It's very light. I'm using light pressure when I'm etching that nail plate, just so we avoid any damage to that natural nail. Wanting to make sure that I'm removing any uh, cuticle on the nail plate for better adhesion. I hope you guys can see okay. Let me know if you can't. Um, see, I noticed it kind of went blurry there for a little bit, so I'll try to make sure we're looking good. So I'm just very, very lightly etching that natural nail. I'm just going to dust it off. Okay, so we're all prepped there. Now, the most important thing to remember when applying our tippies is to remove the shine from underneath. If you do not remove that shine, this tip will not stick for very long. <laughs> and I remember the first time that I actually ever applied these tips, that's what I did, and it dawned on me after I applied, and luckily it was actually just to myself. Um, I realized I forgot to etch the inside of the tip, and within mm, three hours, I had like two pop off. 
So all I'm doing is taking the smaller ends of my medium file and I'm just going to remove all the shine right down to where that tip is going to make contact to the natural nail. So just making sure to give it a good etch. You can also use your e-file. Um, I use my medium sanding band when I'm removing the shine from inside uh, the well here. Okay, so I've got it. You guys can see it's etched. Might be a little bit hard to see in the camera there. I'm going to come and double check and make sure that I have etched underneath right down to where this tip is going to sit on my free edge. Just so we don't run into any issues when we apply. Alrighty. So now another tip for um, prepping this tip is I like to take our medium coarse buffer and basically what I'm doing is buffing down on this cuticle area of the tip. I am basically thinning out that tip so that when I do apply it, it basically goes on very flush with the natural nail. So when you see it on the cuticle area there, you cannot see any ridge from that tip. So I like to pre-blend it so when I apply it, it's going to be very thin around that cuticle area. Now, if you want to use an e-file, no problem. You can actually apply this tip and then come in and blend out the ridge in the back with your e-file. But if you're just wanting to use hand files and buffers, this is the technique that I would suggest doing. And then I'm gonna go come in and double check and make sure everything looks good. Yep, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just gonna put my tip to the side. Now, when I'm doing a full set on myself or my client, what I'll do is I'll come in and size all the tips, lay them out, and then I'll prep everything the same. So it basically saves you time. So I'm just gonna make sure all the dust is off. Now I'm gonna come in with our prep and primer. So our Ugly Duckling Prep. So this is basically just cleansing the nail plate. It's gonna dehydrate it. And we just need to make contact with the natural nail. Okay, I'm just gonna let that evaporate. And then I'm gonna come in with our Ugly Duckling Primer. Our primer is an acidless primer, so it will not burn the skin if you come in contact. But again, you still want to be very careful with your application. I always make sure to really remove a lot of the primer from the brush so that when I do come in and apply it to the natural nail, I'm not gonna run the risk of having that primer completely run off the brush and seep into the sidewalls or the cuticle area and potentially cause overexposure issues. Okay, so apply a thin layer to that. I'm just gonna let that dry before I apply my product. Just gonna check in here, see. Okay, you guys, give that a moment. So I've got my tip prepped. I've got my little clamp ready. So we also carry these clamps for holding down the nail tip. Sometimes clients won't actually need these clips. They have nail plates that fit these perfectly and they won't um, pop off after you apply the product, depending if you're doing an acrylic process um, or gel. If you need these clamps for your customer's hand to go in the lamp, just to hold it down enough so that it isn't popping up during the curing process, that is what I use these for. And I'm gonna show you how to use it if you're not familiar. So I'm gonna grab my sculpting gel so I'm using our clear gel. And I'm gonna grab my Ugly Duckling gel brush here. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take a little bit of the gel and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to put a very thin layer on my natural nail. Well, making sure not to apply too much because if we have too much gel on the natural nail, and I'm gonna put a little bit in the tip as well, then what happens is that gel will pull forward and come off of 
that natural free edge. And we don't want to have too much of extra gel seeping from underneath. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more clear gel and just work it into the tip. Like that. Just going to close up my brush. So all of our Ugly Duckling brushes do come with lids to help protect it against light exposure um, or contamination. So I'm just going to put my lid on, close up my container, and I'm going to come in. So you guys can see clearly here. And I start from the cuticle out. And I just want to make sure when I'm applying it that I'm working that air all the way down. You guys can see it come out. Make sure you get all the bubbles out. Perfect. So now that's in place. I'm going to let go. See, make sure it's on nice and straight. And then I'm going to come in, apply my clamp, and I'm going to cure it. So I have my light all ready. And we want to do a full cure of 60 seconds. And that's it. I did a very thin layer, layer of the clear gel on the natural nail. I rubbed a little thin layer of clear gel on the tip and I applied it to the natural nail. And now we're gonna do a full cure of 60 seconds. Okay, very easy application, quick. Um, this can be done, this type of service, we get a lot of questions about how long the tippies will actually last. And it completely depends on um, your clients, how they are with their hands, their daily activity. But we always say these tips can last anywhere from one week to three weeks, uh, depending on the length as well. In most cases, what I like to do with our tips is because they have that uniform like C curve, let's see if you guys can see it, a beautiful curve built into the tips. When I wanna keep my nails nice and short, um, I will use these tips and place them on my natural nail, clip them down so they're shorter, especially because I do a lot of typing during the day. And that way my, my nail plate is very uniformed. It's beautiful. It's perfect looking. Uh, some of my nails on my opposite hand, especially my writing finger, I have, I tend to have a little bit of a dip in the nail plate just from, you know, where I put pressure on my writing finger. So some of my nail plates are not even. So this really helps to perfect that shape. So if you guys look at it from the side, you can't see where that tip goes into the natural nail. I don't feel a ridge. And we have that perfect apex built in. I'm gonna leave this nail this length for our bling application, but I wanna show you what I'm gonna do too if we get a little bit of gel or any product coming through the cuticle area or you need to buff a little bit more. I just take our coarse buffer and I get nice and close to that cuticle area and I give it a good buff. I also want to remove the shine off of this tip before applying Ugly Duckling Gel Polish or Color Gel. That way it'll make it for a great surface for adhesion. How you guys doing? Just kind of glancing over at the comments to make sure I'm not missing anything. So what is the difference between using a clear gel versus the builder gel? It's preference. And honestly, they're pretty much both the same thing. Like I don't notice a difference um, with either of them. I've just always applied my, my tippies with clear gel because I love our clear gel and that's just my preference. But absolutely, the builder base works amazing, okay? So I've just removed off the shine, taking a double look around my cuticle area. Everything looks nice and flush, and it is ready for gel polish application. Now, after I apply all the tippies to my client's nails or my nails, I will go then wash my hands to really make sure all that dust is removed before I apply my gel, color gel or gel polish. Nothing worse than having a little bit of powder particles get pulled through your color. So I've really made sure to get all that dust off from underneath too, so that it's not gonna interfere with my application. So there you go, the tip is on, it's secure, it's not going anywhere. I've worn these this length for close to three weeks. 
and they've managed to stay on and I've just actually backfilled them. So you can keep the tip by itself. You can put product on whatever you choose. There's so many ways of using these um, sculptless tips. So I think the color that I'm going to work with today, you guys, is number seven. Because I have all these beautiful, I want to use the pink, the pink opals. I've got some clear shapes, some white opal flat backs, some crystal flat backs. I'm just going to do kind of a mixture cluster for you. And I thought number seven, which is this really soft pink, would be pretty with that, especially with the pink opal. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to turn this light down a little bit so it's not so... Okay, so number seven. All right, here we go. I'm going to go this way so you guys can see better. So I'm just going to apply a couple coats to the nail. With our gel polish, thin coats are recommended. A little goes a long way. I'm just going to, it might be a little awkward trying to see in camera as I'm polishing here, so. Forgive me if I'm out of frame. I like the soft pinks, they're really pretty. And I tend to like to do the, the lighter colors when I do a bunch of like either A, B or the Crystal Clear as Mud crystals. And for those who don't know, we have a awesome selection of crystals to our line. They are called Clear as Mud. For those who maybe aren't familiar, we are also introducing some more sizes of different colors that we currently have. We're just kind of trying to fill in fill in the holes right now so that we have a complete line of uh, different flat back colors to offer. But we have lots of pointed backs, which I'll show you here. The pointed backs are these, these stones that are pointed backs and a lot of times people get confused on how to use them how to apply them to your nails or your clients nails so I want to show you today how I do all my crystal clusters and how I incorporate the flat backs as well as little beads and I'm excited to say that we've got some new fun things coming out in 2022 which I'm super excited about so you guys will have to Stay posted on that. Just gonna do a full cure. Each layer of gel polish that we use, we always recommend a full cure of 60 seconds. You don't wanna ever quit cure using a gel polish or color gel because what happens is that first layer isn't fully cured and when you go to apply your second coat, you can actually pull that first layer down causing rippling effects or little chunks of uncured gel in the gel polish. So you want to make sure to do a full cure. So I'm going to do, especially with lighter colors, I always like to come in and do a second coat. A lot of our Ugly Duckling gel polishes will go on in one beautiful coat. Um, for me, I always do two coats when I'm doing gel polish application. That way I can get a really good cuticle area application and perfect it on the second, on the second coat. But again, too, if I know that I'm getting as a time saver, because crystal application does take some time. So if I know I'm going to be doing bling around the cuticle area, I won't be too particular and picky about my application around that area because it's just going to be covered. So that's just a little tip I would suggest when you're doing bling application because this can take some time. Alrighty. I'm getting my blinger tool ready and my stick it. So our Ugly Duckling stick it is a fabulous product to use for crystal placements, embellishments. You can use it to adhere foils. This this embellishment gel, should I say, stick it, really holds your crystals in place even the smallest ones. So if you guys can see here, I've got super tiny beads on here. It holds the tiniest and the biggest embellishments with no loss. Clients come back three to four weeks later and all their crystals are still in place, which is absolutely amazing. 
So before I apply the shticket and do my beadwork, I'm going to come in and finish with a top coat. Um, that is my preference to begin with, partly because in this case, I am going to be doing a big cluster and kind of trailing the crystals off in different directions. So sometimes it's hard to get that top coat in between certain areas. So I will finish with a top coat first and then apply my sticket and my beads and whatever crystals I'm going to be using. You don't have to. You can apply sticket right over top of a gel polish or gel colored gel. Apply your bling and then finish with the top coat. It's completely preference, but this is how I like to work when I'm doing bigger clusters like this. So I will also be applying and using our blinger tool. This is my favorite tool uh, in our collection because I obviously love to do a lot of bling work. Um, you guys can also check out my Instagram page or my Facebook page for any crystal application inspiration. Um, that's primarily what I do. I love it. And having different options of bling really makes it easy for me to create different looks. So I'm gonna just make sure to cure my top coat for a full 60 seconds. Perfect. Okay. So the blinger tool, I just wanna show you, I needed two hands to open it, has a wax tip on one end, which actually has a removable head. So if you, over time, you know, your, your tip kind of wears down and you wanna have a nice fresh one, you don't have to replace the whole entire unit. You can just get the wax replacement tips. The great thing about these wax tips is that you can actually mold them. So using the heat from your fingers, you can mold your tip to have a more of a pointier tip or more of a dull tip, depending on how you like to work. And then the other end is a dotting tool, which is what I use to pick up my sticket and place it on the nail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look at my nail and figure out where I'm gonna place the crystals. Now, typically when I'm doing a crystal, cluster formation, I might usually have longer nails. So I'm going to focus on putting the big bling. You'll see it's going to take up um, the whole nail, partly because I have tiny nail plates. I'm going to focus on the center here with the big bling and then trail off the little crystals and the beads off to the side. So I'm just going to open my sticket. It's well used and well loved. I'm going to grab a little bit and I'm just going to slowly start with the big ones first and cure in between each section just so that I have those crystals in place. So I'm going to I'm going to try. I want to try this big one. Hmm, maybe maybe not this big one. This one is quite large, so I'm going to actually just go to using our square. So this is our pointed back square. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to place it there. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to place the rest of them. So I think what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to use the pear shape. I got a pear shape. See if I can tag it in. So enough will hold those two together and I can still shift in place how I want it. But generally I like to put that point kind of down the center tiered off and that way I can stick a couple more crystals in that area. But I think I'm happy with having those right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place that in and gonna do a quick cure on those and keep them kind of sitting on the nail. Because they're heavier stones and they will start to self-level, I wanna cure them in place so that I'm able to easily work around that. Oops. So a quick 10 to 15 second cure should hold that stick it in place so that those crystals won't shift. Yep, they're in place. So that didn't take long. And now they are stuck there without self leveling everywhere. It makes it really tricky to work with these big stones if you don't kind of cure them in sections. So now I'm going to take a bit more stick it. A little bit more stick it here and I'm going to place it right in that hole. So we got a big hole. We don't need a ton of stick it, just enough, just kind of around the upper edges here. 
and on the nail plate just to hold that in place. So maybe I, maybe I can use, let's use it. See, I just used that really big one. It is quite large. I'm gonna kind of shift it down. Yeah, I just want you guys to see. We, I don't know if we're very clear with that. Sometimes it's hard the camera, it's hard for the camera to focus because the, the crystals are so sparkly. It is quite large, so what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take it off because I'm unsure. So you don't have to commit if you don't, if you're not sure if it's going to work or not. So what I'm going to do is try to go with a smaller one. So I'm going to take the smaller, the smaller crystal, which I think everyone probably would agree that definitely goes better with this design. And I'm going to cure that one just to fill it in. And the goal is when we're doing big clusters with the pointed back crystals to really make sure that we don't have any spaces in between the crystal for things to get stuck in there, um, especially your hair or basically anything. So really creating a wall so that those crystals don't have a chance to collect anything. And you'll see the top there does have a hole. So what I do is I fill it in with beads or crystals. So again, I'll come on top and I'll place a little bit of my shticket there. I will come in and find my beads. The, this opening might be a little bit big for the beads, but what I'll do is I'll just place it on that tacky layer and it should hold. So I'm kind of filling in that spot so nothing will go down there. I'm just gonna put that one on for a quick cure just so those beads don't fall down the hole. And now I'm gonna work around the cluster, filling in any gaps and trailing out my design. Thank you, you like the blingy dish, so do I. It's really pretty, isn't it? I love it. We may or may not be getting those. Hint, hint, just to let you guys know. It's the perfect little dish to put all your crystals in, especially when you're doing a, a lot of crystal placements. Okay, so now I'm just gonna come around and start putting a little bit of the shticket. I'm gonna work at the top area here. I hope you guys can see. Maybe I need to zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna move the dish out of the way so the camera isn't focusing on too much crystal. I'm gonna try to zoom in. I hope that works better for clarity. So again, like I said, I'm going to be filling in all this area right up to the cuticle area. That's why I didn't get too picky with my gel polish application because I'm going to come right up to this area and you're not going to see it. So saving some time in that area so that um, you can use it more towards application for your bling. So I'm just going to pick up some larger crystals. These are the, the pink opals, flat backs, and I'm just going to place them around. And it's lovely because as you guys noticed and saw how easy, how easy is it to pick up a crystal? Actually, I'm gonna, I need a smaller one now. Um, to pick up a crystal, super easy. And then super easy to release it. It comes off so, so easy. So it's not like you have to struggle with your application. Placement is easy. It's great. And what I'm doing is I'm just working now in this general area. I don't need to be curing every single bead that I go on because I put a, a lot of shticket in one area. So I have to use that shticket, cover it with the bling before I cure it. Because if I don't, we're going to have sections of the nail with cured shticket that have no bling on top. And then your whole work is going to get really thick and lumpy. So just working in sections is good. And for example, I feel that I need to add a little bit more shticket. So I'll come in just with the tip and add where is needed. Making sure to really uh, be aware of your application to avoid skin contact. Come on, little guy. And then Okay, so we're just adding bling all the way around. 
And again, this is where I want to add in or fill in any gaps. I'm just gonna put the sticker right there in the corner. And we're gonna add some beads and just build out the design. Now looking at this nail, you probably think that it's it would be so long to remove when your clients come back for a fill. Actually, it's easy. The Sticket holds holds all embellishments on very, very well, but it's easy to remove. So there's no struggle with removing the bling. Okay, I think that that is good. Just shifting around before, making sure everything looks good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop that in for a quick cure. Christine, I know. Sometimes I let the um, what is it, the cat out of the bag too soon, but yes, um, it's it is something that we are working on at the moment because I love using crystals and I found as a nail tech working with bling different struggles that I've kind of come across over the years working with crystals, things that maybe might have kind of deterred me from wanting to do bling application. And partly it's actually having an area to see all your crystals um, for easy pickup, easy application. You know, I wanted something that is easy to to work with and not having to struggle to get the, the crystals or beads out of the little containers. So that completely is uh, something that has been super helpful for me. And I'm just going to kind of work around this area. I don't want to cover the entire nail, but I'm going to kind of trail it off to the side. So now each area that I'm doing, I'm just applying it in sections and I'm taking that big flat back crystal there and I'm pushing it in as much as I possibly can. I might even add a little, these ones are the light rose, which are gorgeous too. Got a little bit of hair on the wax. I gotta take it off. I want that to get into my design. And you just need the littlest amount. So when applying the smallest beads or, you know, little em embellishments, tiniest crystals, you want to make sure not to apply too much stick it because you don't want that stick it to be pushed up over around the, the crystals and kind of jeopardize the clarity of those stones. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna do a quick cure as well, just to hold it in place. And now I'm gonna to start to trail off a little bit down to the corner. So it is very easy to work with using our Ugly Duckling Stickets and the Blinger tool. And we have, you guys can check online for the different color options that we have in our flat back crystals for our clear as mud stones. They are just absolutely beautiful. You can see mixing in white opal, I've mixed in clear, light rose, pink opal. It just, it makes it look gorgeous. I'm just gonna work that design down. And having the different sizes of um, the stones really um, make doing different crystal designs like this or cuticle work applications really easy. And as you can see, I'm just dropping the beads off from the tip. Oops, sometimes you lose the odd one, but that's okay. Oh, two in a row. There we go. And then just, I always like to lock and shift, move, move the nail around a little bit. I got to work on this side here. So, you know, of course I wouldn't necessarily do a full set like this on my clients. And if I did, it would, you know, book a, book a good chunk of your day. Cause it does take a lot of time, as you can see, just doing one nail for placement. But the reward, the results, is so worth it. So worth it. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to slowly kind of trail off, trail off the bling, taper it down, add a bead here and there kind of off of the, off of the design to kind of fade it out. Always looks nice. Kind of see that there? Love it. Oh yeah, I think what I did, oh no, I did put one down here, but it's sunk in, so I'm gonna put another bead just up here, just to fill it in. So that way you have no areas for hair to get caught in the design, which of course is always the number one question about, you know, do you find these clusters get in your way? And honestly, the only time that I find these clusters maybe more frustrating is when the hair gets caught and it will either be little edges that are poking out or areas for that to get caught so just filling it in makes it avoid that situation um sorry guys i'm just gonna check here love the rose color so much yeah it's beautiful isn't it um so i think if you're meaning the rose gold ones or the rose opal ones uh we have them in our flat backs as well as our pointed are pointed pointed back shapes too, uh, in smaller smaller ones, in larger stones. Like you can see, we have our round ones, our square ones, our teardrops. We have them in marquee. Um, we have them in smaller sizes too. So you guys can take a look on our website. How often do you feel like I use too much stick at having it? I don't. I don't. Things won't say, okay, so knowing how much stick it to use. Yeah, so it depends. Like, honestly, you guys, when I when I did the first cluster, and I'm going to show you after, I'm going to take it and really rub over that design, and you'll see they're on there real good. Um, I think sometimes if you're finding that you're losing the little ones, then maybe you need to consider putting a bit more stick it. But the reason why it's kind of gauging that knowing how much to use because if you don't use quite enough then the little beads may not stay but if you use too much the little crystals that you apply might sink in too much and you'll have like that outer rim of shticket sitting on the outside which can you know touch the crystals it can take away from the clarity of the crystals so overall I'm I'm happy with that cluster area let's have a peek here so I'm I'm sh without like doing too much wiggling. I'm wiggling that there and it's not coming off. Like you can rub them and I always like to take, you know, especially with the little beads when I'm working with clients, I'll rub my finger over them and just give it a good little, you know, push just to make sure that they're stuck. If those beads are gonna come off, they're gonna come off when you do that. So I always just like to ensure that before I let my client leave in case any crystals do come off. But there you have it, a little bling application with a tip ease application as well using our tapered square. Um, so if you guys have any questions for me, please let me know. Again, to recap what I used, I used our Ugly Duckling Clear Sculpting Gel with our um, tapered square tip ease, but I'll just show you, I got a pointed almond one here as an example. And you guys, these tips are also great if you do nail art, doing different nail art techniques. If you want to do a set of tips for display for pictures, or if you want to do custom press on nails, I know a lot of nail techs definitely over the COVID period were doing custom tips for their clients. These make great tip options. So having them in both tapered square, pointed almond are amazing. These tips are incredible to work with, very easy to apply very durable and they last for anywhere between one to three weeks depending on how your clients um, are on their hands. I've worn these at full length for three weeks with no issues until I had to do a, a regular maintenance fill. Uh, I used our Ugly Duckling Sticket for the bling application. If you guys haven't tried this Sticket, honestly, give it a shot. You won't be disappointed. It holds the tiniest little caviar beads to the biggest embellishments. And I've done a lot of um, 40 roses that I've attached with our sticket when I do my cluster designs and no issues. It stays on, but easy removal. I like to pair that with our Ugly Duckling Blinger tool. 
The wax tip makes it easy for pickup and removal of crystals and the dotting tool end, which I need to wipe off, um, for picking up the sticket and placing it on the nail. So that is our blinger tool, my favorite tool to use. And then of course, our selection of picked uh, clear as mud crystals today. Um, we used the rose opal, we used the flat back rose opal, white opal, crystal and light rose as well. And then you guys can see right here in the corner, we've got some of our flat back shapes in our crystals, which are gorgeous to use. And then the gel polish color I used as the base was this gorgeous light pink gel polish number seven. So that is what I did today. Love this. Love this nail. Unfortunately, I can't keep it on because I am going to do kickboxing later and it unfortunately will not fit into my glove. But I'm going to stare at it for about 20 minutes before I have to remove it. Maybe take a picture and post it with it because I absolutely love Blink. So, you know, why not add a little sparkle to your life? That's what I say. A little bling. A little bling never hurt anybody. Sometimes it can be blinding. That's what I say. Um, are all the crystals from Ugly Duckling? You got it. These ones are clear as mud. Actually, let me just show you. I think I brought out a package. I had thought. Yep, yeah, here it is. Hold on one second, you guys. Because once I opened the package, I put them in my little, my little containers. But all our clear as mud crystals come in 144 packs for the flat backs. And then 10 packs for our larger stones and our flat back shapes. But clear as mud crystals, this one is Rose Opal SS10. So we have various sizes for various colors online. You guys can take a look at um, that at uglyducklynails.com for all our crystal selections. They're amazing, you guys. Um, most of them are um, 16 facets, which are are really give that sparkle factor. These stones are amazing to work with. That color is stunning. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. So yeah, take a look at all the colors that we have online um, and, and see because we have aquamarine, blue topaz, we have um, jet, we have the black, we have fuchsia, we have light rose, we have peacock, so many. I <laughs> don't want to miss them all, but they're beautiful. So today I picked the pretty pinks. Okay, my nail friends. Well, thank you for joining me today for my demo. If you guys have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out to us directly at um, contact at uglyducklynails.com. That is our email. Um, that is our main contact. But again, if you want to call us directly at head office, feel free to do so anytime. Myself and Natasha are here um, Monday to Thursday. So if you want to talk to us personally about any troubleshooting product questions, we are here for your support. Um, you are most welcome, Christine. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Excited that it's the weekend. So I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend ahead. Um, and enjoy, enjoy your Friday evening. And for those who are overseas. I guess it would be morning time for you pretty soon. All right, just double checking any last minute questions here. Great, you guys. Thanks so much. Lots of love from Christical, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.